So before we get started, I have two folders here, a client folder and a server folder, both of which contain nothing more than a blank main.cpp file. The reason that there's two, they're separated in two, is not just for organization of code, but also because we'll be compiling two different programs, the client and the server. This is cool because it allows us to have a dedicated server as its own program, and it'll, it will also simplify a lot of the code. Our goal for today is to connect the client to the server and to also get the client to disconnect from the server. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start by writing the client code. So let's start by including iostream and including init, of course. And then I'll create my main function. Uh, we could use the arguments. We might not use them today, but I guess it's good practice. So to initialize init, we need to use the command init initialize. This function will return a zero if everything's fine, basically like like C in C++, it returns zero to say that everything's fine and dandy, otherwise it'll return uh, an error code. So what we could do is wrap this function inside an if statement and check if it's not equaled to zero. If it is, everything's fine, and if it isn't, we could print out the error, an error occurred while initializing init. And then we can return exit failure, which is the equivalent of just returning one, basically. It's the macro for that. It's a part of the uh, C standard library. Right, so now we've initialized init and we've even checked if it initialized correctly. The next thing we can do is deinitialize, not right away, but we can prepare it, put all the code together. So we can do this with the at exit function and at exit we're going to run the command init deinitialize. I'm having a bit of trouble spelling initialize today. I N I T I I lies. Okay. So this will run init the initialize at exit, basically. Right, so now we got the initialization. If it initializes, we'll also deinitialize whenever the program closes. The reason we're, do, we're, we're putting it here and not just at the end of the program is in case we run into different errors, we can just return exit failure and not worry about deinitializing uh, init. So our next thing to do is to create a variable of type init host. This is going to be a pointer and I'm going to call it client. Basically this client is um, it's called init host. A server is also going to use the same type and to different differentiate between them is within its initialization. So let's do that. So if I do client equals init host create. That's another init function. Uh, the first parameter is null. Now when we're going to be creating the server, you'll notice that it won't be null. It'll be equal to basically a, a, a macro that, that says that the IP that the server is running on is the IP of the server. But here we don't need an IP. We just simply init host create with nothing as the first parameter. Next is the amount of outgoing connections. So this will be equal to one as we're only going to be connecting to the server. No, we're not gonna be connecting to any anything else. Next is the amount of channels we want. So we could set different uh, channels, but I'll only be using one channel uh, for now to simplify. The last two parameters are the incoming and outgoing bandwidth. I'm going to put zero for both of them, which tells Enet that we don't want to limit the amount of bandwidth. The bandwidth is infinite. Right, well now that we've created our client, we're going to 
check if the client is indeed created by checking if it's not, if it is equal to null. If it is equal to null, we're gonna print out an error occurred while trying to create an inet client host. And then we can return exit failure or one. All right, next we're gonna be creating three different variables. The first one is inet address and I'm gonna call it address. This will hold the IP address and the port of the server we will be connecting to. Next is a uh, enet event called, we call it event. This will hold all the events of the, that we're receiving from the server. So whether it be, we're, it's mostly just going to be data that's received from the server. And the third variable is enet peer, and it's gonna be a pointer called peer. So in this case, the peer here is the server that we're going to be connecting to, um, localized within a enet peer variable instead of an enet host variable, uh, which is slightly different. Uh, peers is anybody who seems to be connected. So with the server, the server has a, a list of peers which represent all the clients that are connected to him so that he can send data to the connected peers. And here we only have one peer to worry about the server, which is also why we've only limited here to one outgoing connection. We will, this is what we're connecting to basically. So to, initial, to initialize our peer, we're gonna run the command, the function enet address set host to start with actually that we're not initializing a peer. First, we need to initialize the address that we want to connect to. So uh, this function will take as its first parameter the reference of address and then the IP we want to connect to. So here, we're just gonna connect to the local IP, but if you wanted to connect to your friends or something, that's the IP you change, you can make it variable. I'm just gonna hard code the local host for now. And then the port, you do address.port and you can equal it to the port you want. I'll be using port 7777. You can use any port you want. I just like 7777. Now we can initialize the peer. We do this by doing peer equals enet, if I could spell, enet host connect. So now we're gonna be connecting to the host. Its first parameter is gonna be the client, then a reference to the address, the amount of channels, one, and then any data that we want to, to send right away, which I'm just gonna put zero null. There's no data for now, just to simplify. So this will connect us to the peer. But of course we wanna make sure that that actually happened. So we're gonna check if the peer is equal to null. If it is, we're going to print out no available peers for initiating an enet connection. And of course, return exit failure. So now we're going to do one last thing. We're going to check if the server has contacted us back. So we do this by using enet host service. This is the command that basically allows us to see any events that are that were that are being received by the server. So as a first parameter, we take in the client, then a reference to the event, which will hold all the data we need. And then the amount of milliseconds that we want to wait 
to to see if uh, if we received anything. So I'm gonna put 5,000 here for five seconds. Now this on its own won't be good enough. Uh, this will return the amount of of different events basically that uh, that are received. And so if we check if this function has returned more than zero things. So we received something from the server. And the event dot type, so the type of event that we received is of type init event uh, type connect. So if the event, so if we received events and the event we received is of type init event type connect, then we've connected to the server. So connection to local or connection to 127.0.0.1. Port 77, 77. Succeeded. Is that how you write succeeded? Who knows? <laughs> Uh, so we've connected successfully, which is just fantastic. But of course, we want to check if we haven't. So otherwise, we want to reset some data. So enet, we're going to reset the peer. So peer reset, the peer we want to reset. And here we're going to uh, say that the connection to our server failed. Now what's interesting is just because we didn't connect doesn't mean that the program you know crashed or failed necessarily. So here you could uh, you could loop back to a menu or something. Let's say it's a video game. you know you don't want the game to close if you can't connect to a server. you just go back. you say oh, we can connect. So I'm still going to put return, but I'm gonna I'm gonna return successfully so I'll put so I'll put return exit success because the game didn't necessarily or the program didn't necessarily crash but you know I don't want to continue and either way it's going to connect it's going to say that the connection failed um, so only two more things to do really uh, the first thing is I'm going to write here game loop or program loop this and everything under it i could put in a while loop but i don't feel like adding a whole bunch of like oh how do we disconnect or if you press key thing we're just focusing on enet so i don't want to add extra fluff so i'm going to just say that that this is the start and end of some game loop some program loop so that i don't write you know like while true or while whatever and add some extra logic that we don't need. Now, inside your game loop or whatever loop of whatever you're doing, you will put a while loop because you're going to check while we've used this function before, host init host service. So while we're receiving events from the server, takes in the parameter client reference to event and we're going to wait one second, 1,000 milliseconds. Now, you could put zero here if it was, let's say, a high-paced game. You don't want to wait because this will sleep the entire program in a way. It's going to stop the entire program until we've waited that amount of time or we received what we needed. But because this is going to pass really quick, I'll put a one-second delay. And we're going to check if the data we received, or if we actually, we're going to check if this returns anything bigger than zero. Uh, so that we actually received uh, something. Now, if we did receive something, uh, we're gonna we're gonna put a switch here. We're gonna switch the type. So we're gonna do different things based on the different type. Uh, here, we're just going to use one type at least for now. I'm still not sure if we're gonna use the other types, but for the server, we will. So uh, I'm gonna keep the code uh, represented similarly. So in the case that we receive an event of type enet 
event type receive. So we receive any data. Then, uh, so if the enet event type receive is uh, is what we receive, uh, then we're we're gonna print this. So I've just copy pasted this from the actual enet tutorial. Uh, basically, they have a whole bunch of things here uh, that we'll we'll be using. Uh, it, it's useful because they. They may, they, it prints out all the data we'd really ever need. So here it prints out a packet of length event dot packet data length containing the data of the packet was received from the data of the peer. We're not going to be using this, at least not yet. But basically, we could store our own data and attach it to peers. Uh, for now, it's just going to be null. Don't have to worry about it. Especially when you're connecting to the server, because the server data, there's only one peer. We know who we're connecting to. And on channel, and then the channel that we received it on. And in fact, I'm going to modify it a bit since we're not using the, um, the peer data. I'm going to remove this and change it to this. Uh, and we're going to use the event peer address host and the event peer address port. So at least we can see something other than null printed out. And that should be it for now. So now, outside of our loop, we're going to disconnect from the server. Now we do this by, now this is, you could do this in your main loop or whatever, it's just, you know, whatever. So enet peer disconnect, we're gonna use this function to disconnect uh, the peer. Uh, and we can send some data here, but I will not. So I'll just put that zero. And now we're we're gonna wait again for enet while enet host service does its thing. Because now we told the server that we want to disconnect. So now we can wait until it's received that and has uh, basically told us that, okay, good, received. So, uh, oops, uh, init, init host service. So here we can uh, do the same thing. We can switch um, the event type. So in the case that it's init event type receive, we want to actually destroy the packet. because we're disconnecting now. So we don't really care about any packets that we're receiving. And in the case of enet event type disconnect, we're going to simply print out disconnection succeeded. I still have no idea if that's how you spell succeeded. And then we can return exit success. And that's it for the client. And now what's interesting is that most of this code actually works exactly the same for the server. I'll show you what, the, what, what I mean. So here's here's the server. So so in the server we start at exactly the same. Include our stream, include enet, create our little main function, maybe have some arguments.
And I'll kind of speed run a bit through this because we're going to start exactly the same if enet to zero. We're going to start by initializing enet for sure. I'll just paste in a lot of the same code that we already wrote. Uh, at exit init d d initialize and now we're also going to create a init host pointer called server but uh, but that's the thing right we're creating a init host pointer but we're calling it server instead of client and it's going to be equaled to well actually we can't uh, we can't do that right away because we need to create the address because we are connecting to something now so I'll create a enet address called address address dot host will be equal to enet host any so this means whatever, wherever were the server is running is, uh, is what I gathered from this. Because otherwise this is just a macro for zero. So it's basically saying, uh, it's saying that it, 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 can, it can connect from, from anywhere, basically, wherever we are. And of course the, uh, the address port will be equal to the same port. And uh, you know, to simplify, I'm going to put this up here, and I'm also going to create the uh, enet uh, uh, event. Just have all three of them there. We set the the address right away, so that now we can uh, we can initialize the server with enet host create. And we can put in a reference to the address. Now, the amount of outgoing connections can be the amount of peers, basically, that you want to be allowed to connect. The For a video game, the player limit. So I'll put uh, 32 for now, but you could put any uh, reasonably large number you want. Uh, and of course, you can link it up to a variable and let uh, the user decide how many connections they want. Next is the amount of channels. So we're going to be using one channel. And then the outgoing and incoming bandwidth limit, which like the other, like the client, will be using zero for an infinite amount of bandwidth, or at least the most that we can grab. Next, we're going to check if the server is null. If it is, we'll... Uh, Ah. If it is, we're going to print out the error. An error occurred while trying to create an enet server host. And then we'll return uh, exit failure. And that's it. So now we've initialized the server. Now we can do the uh, the loop. Now with the server, I won't be able to to get around this. So I will I will be putting a while true. Obviously, don't suggest that. I suggest you know having a keystroke or or something allow you to exit out of the loop. But I just want to focus on the enet code as I've stated before. So within this actual game loop that I'll also might as well be consistent. So within this game loop there will be another while loop this one being the enet host service that takes in this time the server host a reference to the event and we're gonna wait one millisecond uh, I mean one second 1000 milliseconds so 
I'm gonna create a switch here, just like just just like the client. But this time we're gonna have more than just the 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 received because this is a server, it's always gonna check for connections and disconnection because those can happen at any time. With our client, we only checked once if we're connecting and once if we're disconnecting. Now that I think about it, you'll probably want to put everything I'm gonna be writing in the server in the loop here for when the server closes so that we can receive disconnections, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll expand in, in the second episode. So here, Enet event type connect. So if there's any incoming connections, we want to uh, print out a new client connected from the their IP and their port, which will be. Uh, event.peer address.host and event.peer address.port Next case will be the init event type receive uh, event init event type receive uh, this will be exactly the same as over here, so might as well just copy paste that. So if any data receives, we print out the same thing as the client. So the data length, data host and port of who we're receiving from. And the last case will be enet event type, not connect, but event type disconnect. And here we'll print out the uh, the IP and uh, and host, the, the 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 host and port. I mean. and disconnected. And I'll take in the event dot peer address dot host event dot peer address dot port. Now here they also do event dot peer data is equal to null, but we're not setting any data. So I don't think it's uh, it's necessary since we're not creating any. So pretend that was an error. Right, so that is it for our loop. Now at the end, even though our code won't actually get there because while true, but at some point you will want to enet host destroy the server. Finally, we'll return exit success. Six. Exit success. There we go. So while uh, rereading the code, uh, you, you might want to have the init event type disconnect within the main loop over here instead of just received data in case the, ser the server goes down. But but that's one of the, the harder things to follow with uh, their own tutorial is that I'm, I'm having a bit of a hard time knowing when to do some of these things. Maybe ignore the both times I said that, I don't know. <clears throat> so now we've written our client, we've written our server, how about we give them a try? So, to compile, I'm gonna use G++ to compile. Uh, 
we're gonna compile the uh, client first, might as well. So we're gonna compile inside the client, the main.cpp file. We're gonna compile it in a separate folder called build, and I'm gonna call it a.out, just cause. And we're gonna take in the enet library. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the directory build first so that I can actually build it inside. All right, so it's compiled successfully, but uh, before testing, I'm going to open another terminal for the server. So same thing with the server. I'm going to make a directory called build, and then we're going to uh, g++ main.cpp build out with the init library and it's compiled successfully. So now we can go into the build and if we run the server first, nothing happens, which is actually good. That means it's just going in a loop and waiting. Now, if we run the client, what should happen is it should open. It should stay open for, I think it was three or five seconds uh, waiting for input and uh, from the server, receiving data from the server. And after that time is up, it'll disconnect from the server. So let's give it a shot. Oops, wrong terminal. Let's give it a shot. All right, that worked. So there you go. That was episode one, getting a client and a server to connect to each other. Now we can have up to 32 people connect to the server, but that will be a little hard to test since our, since our client disconnects automatically after a few seconds. So in the next episode, we will be making a little chat application to test out receiving and sending of packets, as well as testing multiple connections all at the same time. After that, we will be making a little multiplayer game. But until then, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned. And I'll see you in the next video.